I'm going to show you how to use a cool tool called whiteboard.fi. Uh, it's kind of an unusual uh, name or website address. Uh, the .fi is actually a country code for Finland, which is where this was uh, designed. So uh, whiteboard.fi is a whiteboard tool that allows you to observe student whiteboards and it allows you to take whiteboards that you've created and push them out to kids. So if you think about the Oh, the, I, the, the days of creating your own or having your own little class set of little small um, dry erase boards that you'd pass around the room for students to uh, write on. This is that same kind of concept, but in a virtual world, uh, and it'll even work from home where you can look at students at home and see what things that they're writing on their device. So um, there's a free version and a paid version. The free version is fully capable and you can do most things with it that you would need to do without having to pay anything. Um, it does give you the ability to register or log into an account. The only thing an account gives you is the ability to subscribe to the paid version. So if you don't plan on paying for it, um, which I would recommend and if you are uh, just getting started, um, then you don't even have to worry about making an account. All you have to do is open up whiteboard.fi in a browser and tap new class. This does work on a computer or on a tablet as well. Works great with an iPad and your Apple Pencil. So I'm gonna go ahead and simply click New Class. Now to get started, uh, I need to give my class a name. Now this tool is designed, when you have the free version, to be more of an ad hoc tool. So you're not really gonna create these ahead of time. Uh, in fact, they will actually expire after two hours of inactivity. So you can't actually make one the night before to use that next day but it's a tool that you would use more um, ad hoc in a class. Um, so for example, um, I'm gonna create one and I'll just call it test. I'm gonna turn on the waiting room. Uh, that works the same way as a waiting room would be in Zoom where students have to be admitted in. And there's the ability to do a manual or an automatic save mode for students. Automatic saving is gonna work much faster and it's gonna give you a better live view of what's taking place. So I would leave that unchecked. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a new class. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna give me a link. This link right here is the link that I'm gonna share with my class. So if I'm in a Zoom, I could copy and paste this maybe into the chat or paste it into a Canvas course or whatever LMS or I'm using to get links out to kids, that's what I'm gonna use. Or I could even use the QR code option, which gives me a QR code link to be able to get to that device. So what I'm actually gonna do is I have a student device here, so I'm gonna go ahead and open up my camera and with the photo section, I'm gonna go ahead and zap on that QR code and simply tap on my link in Safari to open it up. Now it asks you to type in uh, the student name. So on the student device, they're gonna type in their name. So I will just call mine student one. And I'm gonna hit join the whiteboard class. Now it tells them that they are in the waiting room. And if I go back to the teacher side, I now see in the lobby, I have a student waiting here. There he is, a student one. I could choose to accept, or my favorite, choose to kick them out of the class if I didn't like that. Love that terminology. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and accept that student. So now they're accepted, I see them here live. Uh, their whiteboard and what's going on. And if you have a whole class of students who join, you're gonna see a whole bunch of tiles that go across here with all of your students connected at once, which is cool. And it is a live view of their whiteboards as long as you have um, auto saving turned on, which means you uncheck that box at the beginning. Otherwise, students would have to click save every time in order to be able to update. So let me switch back over to the student device. On the student side, this is just a plain similar whiteboard app. If you've used any kind of whiteboard app in the past, you have things like arrows to move things around and pencil tools to write and draw. Um, I can do shapes, I can do text boxes to add text and I get just a, the plain text tools, drawing tools that you would expect. On an iPad, you can pinch and zoom and rotate and, and do all kinds of touch screen friendly things um, as you might expect. It even supports Apple Pencils if you have um, something like that on an iPad as well. Now on the teacher side, uh, you'll notice that anything I did on the student side is showing up here. So now that that has been showing up, um, I can see what a student's doing. And when I get a closer view, I can click on that student and I'll get a better view of that student's uh, screen. 
Now it does have some options for feedback tools in here. This would be great, but these do require a subscription. So if you want to give feedback to your students in this model, you could do that. But the one thing you can do, which is pretty powerful, is there's an actions button here, which gives you some options that you can do with their whiteboard. So for example, if I wanted to save their image to show somebody later, I could save this whiteboard image. I could erase their whiteboard remotely, which erases the whiteboard on their device, no matter where they're at. Or I could push my teacher whiteboard to the student. Um, more about that in a second. The other option is I could copy their whiteboard to my whiteboard. Um, so for example, if I really liked this person, maybe I give students a problem, they solved that problem, I wanted to showcase somebody's answer, I could copy this whiteboard to my whiteboard. And when I do that, I get a little message that it's been done. And when I close their whiteboard, I have a button up here at the top that says toggle my whiteboard. And when I click on that, I now see my teacher whiteboard here. Now, because I copied that student device to it or that student screen to it, this is now showing me that student's whiteboard that got copied. So this is the student's version, and this is the one that I copied to myself. Now, I have all of the same tools that students have. So I can write and draw and scribble, and I can go down here and change colors and do all the same kinds of whiteboard tools that I would expect to be able to do. Um, I can do myself in my whiteboard. Um, now, you'll notice when I made changes, they changed for my teacher whiteboard, but they did not change for a student whiteboard. Um, what that does, if I want my whiteboard to show up on a student's, then that's where I do what's called a push. And if I hit push, I get a few different options. I can push just this one page. I can push multiple pages if I have a lot of them in here. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, these top two options allow the students to move things around. They can manipulate these items. So they could delete or erase or rearrange or resize, things like that. If I wanted them to not have that option, I could push this to students as a background, which means this is sent to them and they can't make changes to the background. It's like a, a theme in PowerPoint, for example, uh, where it's just the background of the slide and they can just do anything on top of them. All three options allow you to write on top of them. Uh, it's just whether or not you want students to be able to manipulate those things on, on top of them instead. So if I tell it to go ahead and push this to students, uh, again, I get a message telling me it's been pushed. And now if I go back and look at the student, you'll notice the student device has now been updated with whatever I had on mine. Now, anytime you do push something to students, it will erase what they had on there. So make sure if you're pushing something to students, you know that their whiteboards are going to be marked empty. Uh, once I do that, they disappear. Now, if I wanted to add a new page, that's what this plus sign is down here, I can add new pages for uh, my whiteboards. Now, you'll notice this one is being published to students. This one with this symbol means it has not been published to students yet. All right, and I can jump back and forth to control which one is published to students or which one isn't, depending on which one I'm working on. So what this allows me to do is this one is what students are seeing, but I can go ahead and jump onto this one and start preparing the next slide for students until I'm ready to push it out to them. So a couple other tools in here that are important to point out. There is a PDF button, but that button again does require uh, you to purchase a license to be able to insert a PDF. But what you can do is you can insert pictures and this allows you to insert pictures from your um, computer. Or if you're on an iPad, you can insert pictures from your photo library or even take pictures with your device. This also works great with screenshots. So even if I can't insert a PDF, I could screenshot a PDF and be able to still insert those in here uh, the same well. So for example, if I have a picture that I wanna insert, I can open it up and maybe choose uh, something like a map and upload that into this. And then maybe I wanted to add a text box to go along with it, where I would say, uh, maybe give directions and say, circle uh, the country of Iran on this map. And again, I can use my arrow tool to be able to move things around, position it, and so on. So this is my toggle, my whiteboard here. And again, I can toggle that off and on. Um, and then down below, again, the students don't see it yet because I haven't pushed it. So once I'm ready for the students to see this, now I hit push, I can push this to them. And once I push it to them, their whiteboard is gonna get erased and it's going to get replaced with my pushed map that I sent out to them. And now on the student device, if I switch through, 
circle it, and then that again is going to get updated uh, on my device. So, uh, a couple other tools that are pretty handy. Uh, if I make a new slide here and jump to the third one, um, I can cut, copy, and paste. I can zoom in, I can zoom out. There is the ability to download um, a tool. So, if I have a page here that I like and I want to download and save that page for later, I could save it as a ping, a JPEG, a PDF. So, maybe you made uh, you spend a whole bunch of time making a really nice page. You want to save it to be able to use next hour or the hour after. I could do it this way as well, since again, I don't have the paid version, which allows me to save uh, ones to my library. Uh, it's more of a, again, temporary um, kind of room that I've created here. Uh, a couple other options. Uh, you do have some really cool, you have an eraser tool that allows you to clear things. So I can clear maybe writing, but keep the background images or clear everything off of my slide at one time. Um, I do have the ability to add some backgrounds. There's a grid, uh, which is a, a large grid or with uh, smaller tiles, or there's one here with bigger tiles. Uh, there's also the ability to do music notation, uh, which is pretty handy for, uh, for writing music. And then I have a sticky or emoji button here. And then for the math teachers, there's a really cool math editor that's built in that'll do either editors or even latex code, if you're familiar with that coding language to create math equations and then insert math, and then those equations pop up that you can move around and add, and then again, push to your students and so on. Now, a couple other cool things that I might choose to do. Uh, up in the upper right-hand corner, I have a gear. And if I click on that, again, I can control my lobby, uh, waiting room lobby, if I wanted to turn that off and on. I could lock the room that no more students could join. Uh, I can turn on the save mode, which would allow it to force students to click save if I didn't want it to do it automatically. I could choose to hide students' names. Um, but again, it's important to point out that students cannot see each other's whiteboard. Only teacher can see all the whiteboards, not students. So um, hiding student names only hides them for you. Uh, I could clear all student whiteboards at one time. Maybe we're going to start over with a new topic. I clear them all off and start over. Um, or a really cool tool here is I can actually save all of the whiteboards that have been created, including the teacher whiteboard if I want, and even give it a custom header with my class name or maybe today's date in here. And when I save this, it'll save it as a PDF file uh, that gets downloaded and it will create a PDF and then every single uh, whiteboard, yourself and all of the students with their name labeled on them, will all be added to a multi-page PDF so you have an example of all of their work with you if you needed to go back and look at it later, which is pretty cool. Um, there is the ability in here to do a co-teacher also, but that does also require a subscription to be able to do that. Now, when I'm finished with my classroom and I'm done with this board and I don't want to use it anymore, they will automatically expire after two hours of inactivity. So if you don't use it, it will die. And you can just start over with a new room the next time you go to it. Or if I know I'm physically done with it and I don't want kids being able to go back to it later, I could tell it just to close this room. This room gets ended. Uh, it tells me thank you. And now I can go back to the main page and I can make a new one for that next hour and so on and so on and so on. So that is whiteboard.fi.